Good evening, everybody. And, uh, welcome to tonight's uh, special council meeting, uh, April 9th. Would everybody please stand for the uh, national anthem? Pledge allegiance. Yeah. <laughs> Pledge allegiance. Robert Williams. Ready? Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Roll call, please. Mayor Moore? Here. Vice Mayor Lund? Here. Council Member Ed? Here. Council Member Cosio? Here. Sure. Okay, uh, item number two, public comment. Uh, is there anybody in the audience who would like to address the council on anything that is not on tonight's agenda? Actually, that's not required at a uh, special meeting. Okay, on the public yeah. comment? Only items on the agenda. Okay, okay, on the agenda. Okay, okay. Uh, item number five. Uh, George, are we going to? Yeah, I'm, I'm asking that the council take that out of order because I'm going to suggest a continuance for the reason that uh, we received, as the council probably knows, a large packet of, of uh, information uh, and objection to the project. Um, and we need some time to um, <clears throat> put together some, uh, react to it in the first place and then advise uh, and, and give the council recommendations. So we're in no position to do that this evening because we haven't thoroughly vetted everything. So I'm suggesting that the matter be continued to either uh, May 7th or May 14th, if that's convenient to the council. Either one of those? Okay. Yeah, uh, one. All right, I'll make a motion that we uh, move that to a further date. Second. Okay, should we pick a date before we vote on the yes. motion? Yes. Okay. And uh, also, the motion ought to include the direction to the city manager to set a special hearing on that, or excuse me, a special meeting on that date okay. to accommodate the continuum. Okay. Um, oh, Is the 14th our regular meeting? No. So next week. It's, oh, okay. It's, yeah, next week, the week after. I, I'm good with either date. Me, me too. Weekend. We have a budget meeting on the 14th. We do already. Yeah. Want to continue? No. Both the same. Yeah. And that's no. Is that right? Oh, okay. 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 I just those. You want to go the seventh? And, and I either one is fine with me. Do we need more time, or or uh, is the seventh okay? <clears throat> seventh will do it for. I, I think there'll okay. be enough time for All us. Right. Yeah. As long as it's seven. not the second Wednesday and I have to miss another AMBAG meeting like I am tonight. Okay. So I have a motion and a second. And, uh, move the meeting to the 7th. To, and we're going to move the meeting to May 7th at 6 o'clock. And direct the setting of the special meeting, noticing special we meeting. have the city manager uh, <coughs> direct the uh, you know, motion. Okay. Uh, can a roll call vote, please? Okay. Um, Council Member Cozio? Aye. Council Member Bach? Aye. Mayor Moore? Aye. Council, uh, Vice Mayor Lund? Here. Aye. And Council Member Ed? Here. Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay. The motion, as stated, has passed unanimously. Aye. Okay, so everybody understands basically item five, the public hearing regarding the ARCO station has been uh, moved to uh, May 7th. So if you're here for that and you want to say that's great, if you don't, you know, we're going to hear a few other items and then go to closed session. Okay, uh, number three, public hearing. Consider a resolution adopting a negative declaration for the general plan housing element. Sorry. Um, good evening, Council, um, Mr. Mayor. So the next three items, they, they basically tie into one another. Um, you know, first item A is the negative declaration for the housing element. Um, you know, the following would be the housing element um, approval, item B, and then uh, the community development block grant, which would be item C. Um, the whole reason for setting up this meeting um, this evening and um, you know, in consideration for us going for, for community development block grant funding is that you have to have a housing element that is in compliance. Um, the city currently does not have that housing element in compliance and we have been working on 
um, that over the past several years to become in compliance uh, with the state and, um, and therefore be able to go for uh, grants from the Community Development Block Grant. And so before you this evening is uh, the negative declaration for the general plan housing element. Um, you know, as you know, we're going through our general plan update and part of that general plan update will have a housing element uh, attached to it, but um, at this point the city is basically so far behind that we have to get this one approved and then basically we'll have the other one fall right in line, um, which is a good thing. Uh, as well, that next housing element would go out from 2015 out eight years, um, which will give the city some time to be able to focus on a lot of other things. And so, yeah, before you tonight is the negative declaration, and um, with that, we've kind of gone through the initial study. And you know, since this um, this is more so a document, um, you know, the effects are kind of later um, in time as developments do come through. Uh, that would be housing related, and so we were able to go with a negative declaration uh, for this housing element update. For the general plan. Okay, I'll bring it back to the council. Uh, um, you mean questions on the yeah on the documents? Um, there was one that I brought to Trisha's attention this afternoon in chapter one, page mm -hmm. four. Yep. Yep. So that would be on item B, but uh, to address that okay. that question. Um, the correction was made from when the Planning Commission had found that um, that correction, and uh, the copy that was just uh, distributed was basically the same copy that the Planning Commission got, whereas the change that was made um, wasn't reflected in the packet that you got. And that was, you're referring to page 1-4? One 1-4. Four. One four. And basically I'm assuming the, library? Yes, yes. And um, yeah, Commissioner Franco had caught that and, and basically the copy was both in the city hall and at the public okay, library. Okay, so that's already and been And so yeah, that's been, corrected. That's been a, uh, corrected, but um, thank you for, for catching that. Okay, so right now we're just dealing with the negative doc yep. and this. Yep. This would be for item B, which for item B. Um, we can. Okay, I'll save my other questions for when we get to item B then. Okay. Tony? Um, Brian was me. Yeah. Robert? No, oh, good, thank you. Good. Okay, I need a. You need a motion. For I need a for speaker. Each one of them. Yeah, be, yeah. What I need to do is, uh, do we have any speaker cards, Trish? Okay, I think this is for ID. Okay. Okay, there you go. So we'll do A. We're gonna do number A. So, we need a, a, a motion to pass the resolution. Resolution number two thousand and fourteen. Oh seven. Oh seven. Oh, seven. <clears throat> I make a motion we approve resolution number 2014-07, a resolution of the City Council of the City of San Juan Batista to adopt a negative declaration for the draft 2009-2014 housing law. Second. second. I'll second. Uh, no. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Yes. Uh, Council Member Cozio. Aye. Councilmember Bach? Aye. Councilmember Edge? Aye. Councilmember Moore? Aye. Councilmember Lund? Aye. May all members of the council being present, the motion as stated by the maker passes unanimously. Okay. 3B, consider resolution adopting the 2009-2014 general plan housing element update. Okay. Okay, Matt. As, um, <laughs> as I mentioned, all these items basically you know, go along with one another. Um, this next, next item, as uh, Mr. Mayor had just presented, is the, the draft um, housing element. Um, when I first had got brought on board, I had showed up and there was basically a list that um, was given to us by the state, which kind of went through the housing element saying where we needed to make changes. Um, from that worksheet of changes, I was able to go through and uh, make those necessary um, edits that were needed to become or to come in compliance with um, state law and uh, working back and forth with 
the state. Uh, we were able to um, include a lot of the comments and things that were necessary. And um, from that, you have a draft in front of you that does comply um, with their standards. And then um, just to touch again on that, um, that one little miss there that has been it's corrected. It's already been and corrected, and just not on our copies. Yes, exactly. Which one is that? Oh, uh, that's the 2-4. Uh, or no, excuse me, 1-4. One four. Chapter 1, page 4. Um, there was a word missing. Oh. And the word was library at the very end of the sentence. It says uh, that copies of the draft housing element will be available for review at the city hall and public library. <laughs> okay, any Rick? Yeah, um, so um, Exhibit B is the housing element with the changes in Appendix 1 that were recommended by the state? Yes. Okay. Any other? Rick, Julie? Um, yeah, just a couple little things. Uh, chapter 2, page 10, just needs an A dropped, um, very very minor correction. It looks like uh, it's under homeless, n number six, homeless persons on page 2-10. Uh, homelessness is not a one of the mo more pressing issues, like somebody was going to say a pressing issue and changed it to one of the more, so just drop the a, uh, very minor. <laughs> Doesn't really change the meaning of the sentence. Um, and then I had a question on 2-11. Uh, just a curiosity question. In 1990 and 95, there were 83 mobile homes in the city, and in 2000 there were 14, and in 2013, 16. What happened to all the mobile homes? Was there a so, change in how things were? I think part of that just has to do with the apples to apples. So I know, um, you know, the the data, especially the data sources that those. Um, time frames are looking at um, you know I think with the census they would do uh, you know a big push at those 10 year marks um, but they would ask a lot of different questions or you know they had the long form of information but then kind of at some of those juncture points in between they would have um, smaller survey sample groups um, and so I think depending on um, you know, how that data was collected as far as what a mobile home was considered. Um, you know, it's just kind of inconsistencies in those data sources that we have. I mean, this, a lot of those past numbers were carried over from past um, housing elements. And so as far as, you know, the current data looking at 2000 and 2013, um, you know, I'd feel more comfortable with those numbers since, you know, we were able to kind of look and get that data, but as far as going back, um, I would say some of that, that data can not be as accurate, and especially now how, um, you know, as far as doing the, the census, I mean, they kind of um, ask a lot less questions, and so um, that's one of the troubles I had with going through this and updating a lot of the basic data was that, um, you know, you're waiting for those those 10-year census marks to get the data, but they just don't have as much data as they used to in the past. And so um, just, I guess, best trying to compare apples to apples. I so you don't I, really know where. I think yeah, what, so. what threw, threw this off was, uh, if I remember right, they included Mission Farms as a mobile home. Right. And they're not really they're mobile homes. They're RVs. actually travel trailers. Yeah. So that's why there's, uh, uh, you know, five years later, there's a big difference. And uh, the current data of 16 was at night in a uh, field survey. Right. The lots, and we feel comfortable that's really accurate for mobile homes. Yeah, I figured the numbers currently were accurate. I just wondered how they had so many, and I, I thought yeah. of Mission Vineyard that yeah. that might have yeah. had that, something to do was, with how, yeah. how those were classified. Um, and then on uh, 3 13. Um, <laughs> Just wondering, because uh, our fire department has changed quite a bit um, since uh, 
this says the San Juan Volunteer Fire provides reciprocal aid to other jurisdictions and some other um, comments. And I wasn't sure if that needed to be more current or because this is the housing element for 2009 to 2014, if it doesn't need to be updated until your next housing element. Yep. Yeah, so that's correct. That's second, basically correct. Second part's correct. <laughs> that's basically what's going on here. I mean, as time goes past and, you know, that something that uh, has evolved, yeah. uh, the new housing element in the general plan is going to be, you know, reflecting the current stuff, whereas this, um, this draft was basically um, somewhat together in probably before the merger, I guess you could call it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so, so basically, yeah, in the next uh, housing element cycle, um, which is being done with our general plan update right now, um, those new, um, that new information that will be current It'll be about reflected. the fire department okay. and what is involved in it. Okay. Great. Well, I just want to say it looks to me like you've done an excellent job, and we appreciate all the hard work, and, and uh, I know with Roger backing you up, it's been... Uh, quite a project for for both of you and thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Robert? No, good thing. Hey, uh, speaker card. Speaker card. Carl Hong. Good evening, members of the City Council. Carl Bunk here. Um, I just find it very disheartening to uh, review the implementation goals of the housing element that are found, I think, primarily in chapters four and five, in that it completely erodes the rural character of our community that we have fought so hard over the years to preserve. And I'd just like to run through some of the things. I, I, it's hard for me to believe that you're not keying in on these uh, in your discussion. First of all, uh, one of the goals is to increase the number of units per acre from 15 to 20 to con be able to consolidate lots. There's an area uh, proposed to be rezoned to high density R3. I don't know where that's located. To encourage the highest allowable residential densities. And somewhere it's stated that for a developer to break even, and I don't know if that's the, if they're doing affordable housing, but that would be a minimum of 50 to 60 units. And then also to annex areas within our sphere of influence. You know, we've fought so hard to keep this community, um, uh, the differentiation between agricultural and keeping things compact here. But this type of, development, I mean, 50 to 60 units, 20 units per acre, I don't know exactly what it means, but I can tell you from some of the projects that I've been involved in, like the Mission Gardens project, the um, Creek Bridge, those were all, you know, the developers wanted to come in with quite a few uh, higher number of units, and those were ratcheted back so that they would be more compatible. I guess I have a couple of questions too. Under this scenario of the implementation goals, what is the maximum number of units that could be built under that scenario, these scenarios, these goals that are set out? And then do we have an annual percentage growth limit still? Could a developer come in and just eat up? You know, I assume that they're cumulative, maybe even cumulative into the future. So could a developer come in and decide to build like 200 units and eat up all of those uh, percentages from present, past, into the future? Um, and then, you know, the negative decoration is keyed in. This is all wrapped up into one. And I can't believe that you don't have, co that a negative decoration can be issued on this. Uh, what are the impacts on water? sewer, schools, traffic, roads, you know, uh, what is the maximum number of units that can be built under this scenario? I, I'm just really concerned uh, as somebody who's really loves this town and would like it to 
keep its character. I understand that we have to have some development. I'm not against that. But this just seems to go way over, uh, over and beyond. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speaker cards? No. Okay, I'll, I'm going to close. Any, would anybody in the uh, public that would like to address the council before I close it? Seeing none, I'm going to close it and bring it back for discussion. Any um, discussion? Well, I'd like to hear from staff on, on those issues before I make any comments. Yeah, the answer to it is, is that when you deal with the uh, state of California housing community development, there's a whole bunch of areas. This is a whole number of metropolitan areas where they encourage units for acre, and that results in apartment complexes that are three and four stories high. We've argued with them that in a rural setting like San Juan Batista, that uh, it's just not functional because we still don't have the density that large metropolitan areas have. And our current uh, R2 and R3 standards uh, puts limits. R2 is from 6 to 10 units, and then the R3 is just from 8 to uh, 14 units. So our current zoning ordinance doesn't allow us to achieve up to 20 or 30 or 50. You know, we have in place those things. But the state wants you to encourage higher density because that means higher density, smaller units, and more affordable. And so it meets the overall strategy of providing more affordable housing to the residents. Now, how we achieve that uh, is going to be an ongoing battle between the HCD and the City of San Juan. But right now, our current uh, guidelines and development and our zoning ordinance doesn't allow uh, densities high, as high as and great as the HCD requires. Well, we have to put the thing in to make it yeah. uh, meet their standards. That's we do still have a growth control ordinance, though, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, but it's declared unconstitutional. Yeah. Oh, even the 3% ones? Yes. Oh. Yeah, okay, and so. that, that's exactly what I thought were, were the... And, and, and because the HDD is they're, they're very adamant that they don't like growth control ordinances because it puts constraints on housing that affects the housing price and it makes it less affordable. So indirectly, their of the feeling is, is that you should have... Uh, higher densities and more open policies to make housing more affordable. And that's what we're talking about. Yeah, that, now, that's how I... Do you have a limit? Do you want to answer your question? It's close. Lower our impact yeah. fees. Oh, no, you? Okay. Other things to promote more reasonable applications for housing and then hopefully in turn that make housing more affordable. Okay, any other... Uh, Mayor, yeah. may I just make one comment? One comment. One you comment. want to get to my... <laughs> required 49 units. That's our fair share. And we've got nine, I think, according to the report. So we only need to accommodate 40, you know, under our zoning, be able to accommodate 40 more units. That's very different from what's been proposed, you know, under our housing order. Thank okay, you. thank you. You're welcome. I'll bring it back. Um, Any yeah, I, dealing with the sustainable community strategy with AMBAG and, and all that that I've been doing lately. Um, I can see where a lot of us think it's real nice to have little one acre parcels spread out all over the place. But um, that's not really the most environmentally sound or the best for uh, the lower economic and if we do have some nice large homes in the surrounding area, we will have to um, offset that with some higher density, lower income homes. It's, it's just the nature of what cities have to do nowadays. It's it the whole philosophy of, uh, of uh, development of cities is they want to get away from the urban sprawl and they want to make it, you know, uh, smaller pots higher densities so that you don't get out and then take up agricultural land. You know, and that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. And it's an efficient use of uh, yeah. urban services. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the bigger things that um, was hard, I think, for people to grasp. And 
uh, in the general plan update is that people want to preserve that open space, like Roger's saying, you don't want to have the urban sprawl. But then everyone wants to have their, their um, white picket fence in front of their single family house, and, and the two just don't jive. But there's ways to have a mixture, and that's kind of what um, most juris jurisdictions are pushing, having the mixture of, of all types of housing. Um, even in a single development, you can have you know, different types of densities. But um, you know, one of the things, just to kind of clarify, and I know this was, um, was a little bit hard to digest and understand, as well as just this city um, you know, is required by the state to have you know, 3% um, area to grow. So we have to basically say, hey, this is the space where housing could go. And if development comes, then, then there's space for it to grow. But if not, then you know, it's kind of like we have this space that is allotted for residential. And those are the, that's what we have to do as a city to say, OK, here's some vacant spots here and there. Um, you know, here's some other um, zoned uh, residential. Here's where it can fit in in the mixed use. And, and then um, the number um, that we get given each housing cycle, which is the uh, RENA number or the Regional um, Housing Needs Assessment, is kind of the breakdown of that lower, um, those different lower income brackets of uh, affordable housing that, that the city has to comply with. And so um, basically during um, this last cycle, we had a certain amount that was allotted to us. And then um, you know, with the next general plan update in housing element, we'll have a new set of number that's basically our target. Um, and so that's, that's kind of how the city is trying to promote inclusionary housing through trying to um, have those lower income housing and units. The bigger picture is not all just big seven to 12,000 square foot lots. You know, you have to accommodate uh, smaller lots that, uh, that have the transitional housing, you know, uh, farm housing. All of those things work in to make a diverse housing market. And that's what we have to provide. Yeah, and we want to preserve the surrounding ag land. And I think the way that we do that is with zoning. Exactly. Um, no one can come in and force us to change the zoning. Yeah. They might be able to come in and try to force us to use a, a certain zoned area for a certain type of housing. Um, but as we saw with the D'Ambrosia project, when we accommodated them, um, they're not building. And the reason they're not building, it's my understanding that they don't feel that they can sell that type of housing in this area. So that in itself kind of slows down anyone from coming in and, and doing that. It's just not popular in this area. It's a two-edged sword, yes. And that's what we're dealing with is a very rural, call it city like San Juan, and we have to implement goals that come from Sacramento that look at wall housing through the state of California, both High density and urban as well as the rural, and that postage stamp just doesn't apply. Yeah, as mm -hmm. much as I like having my space, I don't want to spread out into the prime ag land. Yes. I think, I think what most people don't understand is, is the state sets these goals, but they're not going to come down and mm -hmm. shut us down because we don't have. X number of affordable housing, or the developer has to come in and do a project, and we specify, okay, a certain percentage has to be affordable housing. Now I know in other jurisdictions, what they do is a guy can offset that by buying it out. And if you establish goals, you have to right. That's what I mean. How we achieve. Okay. Uh, I need a motion and for a second. Motion for a resolution. I need a resolution, not a number. Okay. <coughs> Wait. Do I have a motion? I lost it. Somewhere. It's right here. Oh, okay. I think it's, oh, uh, it's right. hiding after all Wait. the appendices. Yeah, right. Make a motion that we approve resolution 2014 08. 
the resolution of the City Council of the City of San Juan Batista to adopt the draft 2009-2014 housing element. Do I have a second? No, no second. second. Oh, go ahead, Rick. <laughs> okay, Rick. And uh, have a roll call vote, please. Yes, Council Member Cozio. Aye. Council Member Bob. Aye. Council Member Edge. Aye. Council Member Moore. Aye. Council Member Lund. Aye. All members of the council being present, the motion is stated by the maker passage unanimously. Thank you. Okay, item 3C, consider a resolution approving an application for funding and the execution of a grant agreement and any amendments thereto from the community development allocation of the state of CDBG program. Matt, you're off again. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, <laughs> members of the council. Um, so just to kind of give an overall update, I know we've been keeping you guys up to speed as we've been going through this process. Um, so back in January, um, the NOFA or the Notice of Funding Availability came out um, from the state going about um, talking about how much money that they had to, to give out for certain kinds of projects. They hosted a meeting in Hollister to kind of go over um, the application process. And so I was able to <clears throat> attend that to get a sense of what kind of projects um, could the city go for and have a really good chance for getting uh, funded. And so from that, um, we kind of you know, put our heads together as far as staff and try to get a sense of what would be good for the city. Um, part of the application, uh, there's a design um, meeting which basically um, calls members of the public to um, you know, see what they think would be the best projects to go for and kind of giving them a, a sense of how the community development block grant works and how it's funded and, and uh, what projects are, are, um, are funded and what projects are not funded. And so from those meetings, um, it was actually really good to get a sense of what the public had in mind and, and of course it kind of jived with what we had in mind. Um, and so from that, I mean, we kind of started to draft up um, the separate applications. Um, just this last Monday, we kind of had a meeting with the members of the public again, just to kind of say, hey, th these are the projects that um, we've identified and that we're going to be going for. Um, in the packet, I know the packet had come out um, listing two different projects, um, and I think kind of since staff has been pulled in several different directions and you know and kind of looking at how important the one project was we kind of focused in on um, the one grant because the one thing too with this grant we have never gotten funding for it and so part of the grant itself it rates you higher if you basically have a good performance with past grants and so um, you know after kind of talking about it and and uh, figuring out the best strategy, um, it seemed that if we can get this one grant and do it right, then we can go for future grant funding. And the city is in a good position because we, we fall in this category of the low to moderate income bracket, and the whole city falls in that category, whereas other communities, they might have pockets of you know, these different areas. And so, um, we have pretty good flexibility in that we, we meet that, that threshold. So from going through the process, the, the um, project that kind of reached to the top of the list was the pellet softening plant in that um, you know, the city's invested a lot of money into that project and it's basically been on hold looking for a funding source to complete it. And so, um, you know, staff, um, you know, I thank them for coming in there here all weekend, um, chugging out the rest of the stuff because um, you know, I know during any given day there's, there's several projects or you know, two handfuls of projects that we're, we're working on and so it was really good to come in um, in both days this weekend to kind of crank out a lot of this stuff. And so the project that we're going for, the, the pellet softening plant, um, the total that we're asking for is um, one million one hundred forty-four thousand and six hundred dollars, 
and then you know the city would be contributing two hundred thousand into that on top of you know all the equipment that we already have and and uh, studies and things like that um, and so uh, Trish had handed out um, Mm -hmm. Yep, and so, um, like Roger just mentioned, with uh, this project, it being a water project, um, the state is really hot and high on funding uh, potable water projects, and that fits into this category. Uh, one of the other things, too, is not only is this benefit going to be to those, those low to moderate income group, um, but it's going to be for the whole community, which, I mean, that was something that, um, you know, we were pushing towards. Um, yeah, so in front of you this evening, basically as part of the, the grant process, it, it asks for a resolution from a, the governing body to uh, show support for the project that we would be going for. And um, that's kind of what we're asking for tonight. And then, of course, as this um, community development block grant ties to the housing element, now that we have uh, an adopted housing element, we can now go for um, these, these grant monies. Uh, Matt, what's the turnaround time for uh, an answer? So um, basically this, this, um, this thing's going to be packaged up tomorrow morning. It's going to be sent up to the state. They, if they need any clarification, they can get back to us within the next month or so. Uh -huh. But basically, I think the window is sometime during the summer. I, I believe it's uh, July and August in that range. Um, and that's, that's when they would kind of choose their projects and, and uh, move forward. Well, I think it was a great choice. I mean, that's not something. When would the fund, presuming we get the grant, when, when would the funds be available? So I believe the, the grant works where you spend your money, do the work, show that you've done the work, oh. and then you get reimbursed. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that's broken up, if it's a, mm. every quarter or what exactly, but that's uh, the gist of it. Okay. Okay. It's basically like a construction on mm -hmm. okay. On the other uh, um, two grant projects that we would have liked to go for, but have decided that this one is our best chance mm -hmm. of getting it, and we don't want to jeopardize it um, by getting too diversified. Do you expect that there might be some kind of, uh, say, parks grant, where we could do the Gar Garuti Park, or a law enforcement grant, where we could do the code enforcement? Um, are there other types of grant funding that will be available down the line where we might be able to fit those two projects? Yeah, I think um, that would probably take some research and I'm not sure who would be doing that. <laughs> it probably could be me. Um, I know as part of the uh, general plan update, um, one of the things that we're including in that general plan, which most cities don't do this, but we have a strategic plan element. And in there, um, there's different um, programs that you want to implement. So um, I would make sure in review of that that we have both of those things that we weren't able to get to, and then that committee, the strategic plan committee, can work on, um, you know, with staff, work on finding um, funding sources for those, those type of projects. Because the one that's about to close out, that's just one type of grant funding, right? Yeah, that's just one type, and I mean, there's all different types of grant funding out there. Um, one of the other things to note is that, I mean, again, we can go for grant funding next year through CDBG. Uh, yeah, I was just hoping know. to get to it a little sooner. Yeah, oh yeah. No, I, I agree with that. I agree. Yeah. Any other uh, questions? Looks, looks very so, good. Okay, well, the purpose kind of why we needed the grant was because we don't have the money. So are you sure that they don't uh, delegate those funds into account that we'd be drawing from so that they can monitor see that we actually spend it the way we're... Yeah, the working of the thing is going to work with you. Okay. Like use uh, a draw chief certain house stones in the okay. That's part of it. Okay. Because that that was a question I asked. Because 
There's got to be an administrator or somebody that's watching yeah. it because I don't want it to happen to this, presuming we get it, what happened before. Exactly. And, and uh, you know, so. Yeah, you know, what happens uh, is you deplete your, you know, you have to have increments yeah. to re, uh, you know, so like to, you know, put back. Roger in your describes so. it as a uh, construction loan. Yeah, that's what. It, and yeah. I always think back to my favorite contractor that had a new pickup with first draw on the license plate. <laughs> <laughs> are there any speaker cards? Uh, okay. Any other questions, uh, Council? Um. Yeah, along the lines, the to what happened before, it's a lot easier for things like that to happen when a city goes out and simply borrows the money um, rather than gets it as a as a grant. And uh, I believe we do have backing of the water district on this. Yes. 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 Or, or I should say, we expect to have backing from the water. Is that a better way to put that? Dean, is they're having a meeting tonight too? I think, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And just to kind of reiterate, I think um, uh, our chances are looking pretty good. I think you know, from going to that uh, that workshop, you know, I was able to kind of connect with our our local district manager, and it's like, oh, Samuel Batista, I haven't seen you guys for a long time, and and. Um, you know, and then of course, you know, the water project being a high um, thing, you know, not receiving funding for quite a while, um, you know, meeting all their thresholds, having our housing element um, basically ready to go. So things are looking pretty good. So cool. just, uh, you know, put good thoughts out there and I'm, I feel pretty confident about this one. Including a far more efficient city government than we used to have. Okay. Nice. Any other discussion? Can I help it? Robert? No, let's get it. Rick? Mm -hmm. Tony? Uh, no. Tony? Okay, I need a uh, motion. And I need a resolution number. Uh, nine. Number, um, nine. 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 Okay, I need a motion and a second. I'll make a motion to have me implement the project for the rent. I have to read rent. that. I have to read that. This one right here at the top here. Give me yours on there because mine's already got <clears throat> Okay, make a motion for a resolution of the City Council of the City of San Juan Batista approving the application for funding and the extension of a grant agreement and any other amendments, therefore, or thereto, from the community development allocation of the state CDBG program. Second. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Councilmember Cozio? Aye. Councilmember Bach? Aye. Councilmember Ed? Right. Councilmember Moore? Aye. Councilmember Lund? Aye. Okay. All members of the council will be in the motion is stated by the maker passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, item number four is a closed session. So. Yeah, closed session. Um, so that's it then because I suggest we, that we might want to go in the back and she's going to take a while to break down unless you want to stick around for the announcement out after. Okay, why don't we okay whatever, whatever you want to do. Well, I'll be in recess for five minutes. All right.